Hello again, this is Earl Silverman, Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Rheumatology, welcoming you back as I highlight a paper of particular interest from the December 2023 edition of the Journal of Rheumatology. Today I will speak, be speaking with Dr. Raphael Micaroli, who is the first author of an article titled, Obesity Represents a Persisting Health Issue in Axial Spondyloarthritis, Particularly Affecting Socially Disadvantaged Patients. Raphael, I wanna thank you for taking the time to speak to me and our listeners on behalf of all the authors of your paper, as this is an important and intriguing observation. So shall we begin? Yes, so thank you very much for the invitation and for sure for picking up uh, our paper as uh, the editor's choice. Thank you wow. very much. Thank you. So what was, for our audience, what was the aim of your study and why did you decide to study this particular issue? So I think when we look at lifestyle factors, then we that we actually can do something about obesity next to probably smoking stands out when we're talking about axial spondylar arthritis. So being overweight or even more obese in patients with excess spondylar arthritis has significant impacts on, on the disease activity and also on the response to TNF inhibitors. So it has been shown previously that they have a high disease activity and they respond less to TNF inhibitors. And obesity was mainly studied on a individual level so far in axial spondylar arthritis. And we now wanted to uh, a bit extend the knowledge about obesity in axial spondylar arthritis and change the perspectives and look at it from a public health point of view. We wanted to know if obesity was more prevalent in patients with axial spondylar arthritis compared to the general population. And we wanted to find out if certain socioeconomic factors are associated with obesity in expo. So I think understanding all these factors is key in order to create public health interventions that really hit the problem of obesity. Thank you. And please describe how, when it was done, how you did it and exactly the population you studied. And so it's a study from Switzerland, where I'm actually also talking from. Um, we used um, our nation, national cohort, the Swiss Clinical Quality Management Registry for Rheumatic Diseases, which includes a quite large group of patients with axial spondylar arthritis patients. On the other hand, we had publicly available data from the general population from the Federal Statistical Office of Switzerland. And uh, we classified patients from the SCQM cohort and also from the general populations uh, into different BMI categories, which are very well known into underweight, normal weight, overweight, and obese. And then we conducted a repeated cross-sectional analysis, um, primarily aiming to contrast the prevalence of these various BMI groups between individuals diagnosed with axial spondylar arthritis and general population at those three time points. And in addition, we also looked for differences within various subcategories like age groups, sex, and education status. And in patients with axial spondylar arthritis, as previously described, we also wanted to to look a bit deeper into some socioeconomic factors. We uh, compared the level of education and the job type within the different BMI categories. And um, long you mentioned that you picked three time points. Can you expand a little when they were and why three, why two? I mean, it's great that it's longitudinal, so. Yeah, I mean, Besides only looking at, at one time point cross-sectionally, we, we wanted to find out if the differences and characteristics of obesity changed over time. The Swiss Federal Statistics Office of Switzerland 
um, conduct national surveys on, on a variety of public health issues, roughly all five years. So we had the data ready from 2007, 2012, and 2017. And the SQM, which includes this uh, excess modular arthritis cohort, is an ongoing cohort. So we wanted to analyze if specific trends emerged over time or not. And I think it's very important as the prevalence of obesity in general um, rises. So we had no idea if this also applies to axial spondylar arthritis or, or if it goes into another direction and um, also regarding the socioeconomic factors. That makes sense. And I guess part of the answer of the three time points, is that's when the studies in the general population were done. So that makes exactly. a lot of sense. Yeah. And so now that we've set it up, so what did you find? Yeah, so clinically, we were able to, to show what was previously known. So patients with excess spondylar arthritis had uh, a, a more active disease on, shown by various um, known measurements and they were predominantly male, were older, had longer symptom durations and had a higher account of um, peripheral arthritis, antithesitis, and also um, objectively higher inflammatory markers in the blood like CRP or ESR. And then regarding the comparison of the different BMI groups to the general Swiss population, axial spondylar arthritis patients showed a higher obesity prevalence compared to the Swiss general population. So roughly 19% of the patients with axial spondylar arthritis were obese, and in the general population, it was about 11%. So 8% more um, obesity in axial spondylar arthritis. And there was a slight increase in the mean BMI uh, among axial spondylar arthritis patients between 2007 and 17. And uh, we looked deeper into that. And um, it was seen that mostly in females, uh, there was a rise of BMI less in males. And socioeconomically, obesity in excess spondylar arthritis correlated with lower education levels and higher prevalence of blue collar workers. This means these both are, are a bit uh, hints that it actually were the more socially depressed patients which suffered obesity. And overall, there was a, a greater obesity prevalence in OXPA and mostly associated with lower socioeconomic status. Um, I just want to clarify for the listeners, when you pick, <clears throat> you weren't serially following the same patients. These are the cohorts at each time. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, just to so it's really, yeah. So it's possible that one patient in 2012 was also assessed at 2017, um, but it's also possible that these are different patients. Right, and yeah. people could have changed groups, but that's sure. Yeah. just to clarify. Yeah. And so now that we have, the, so what do you, what does your group believe to be able to define the implications of this are? And... Mm -hmm. So I think there are um, implications on the individual patient level, but, but also on the, the broader public health level. So I think we as, as practitioner, um, when we have to treat patients with axial spondylar arthritis, have to be aware that obesity plays a, a, a crucial role in the disease and in, in, in the, the overall uh, journey of a patient with axial spondylar arthritis. And I think we have to address it accordingly. So in every patient, we have to, to measure uh, the height and weight and, and calculate the BMI and um, be active if the patient is obese. And here we usually um, refer the patients to the obesity outpatient clinic, where they really go probably through all associated um, diseases, diabetes, um, heart diseases, et cetera, and, and take measures as needed. So they involve dietary cons counseling, exercise programs, and also possibly pharmacological interventions. And probably more and more also 
bariatric surgery if all the other measures don't work. And um, sometimes we we are very happy if this if that happens because we we try to treat the patient which is severely obese with different uh, biologics and they don't respond and one of a sudden um, they lose weight and sometimes magic happens and they actually respond. And on the other hand, as I said, there are um, implications on the public health level and. Um, there are various measures in Switzerland which try to tackle obesity in general. And our data showed that obese patients with expo mostly have similar socioeconomic risk factors as the general population. But just with the difference that obesity is more common in expo in every assessed category, which possibly suggests that we need additional public health interventions specifically tailored for patients with OXPA. And here in Switzerland, we have several public organizations for patients with rheumatic diseases. And probably um, it is possible that they get a bit more active on, on this topic, that they um, promote more the topic of obesity and the associated downsides of being obese and having uh, axial spondylar arthritis. Well, it's great to hear that you have a place to send your patients a dedicated clinic that really sure. worthwhile. It's it's just these days the they have a pretty long waiting <laughs> list. So it could be that they have to wait for several months actually, um, especially as these new drugs came up. But right. Yeah. Very interesting. And so all good studies as this is will lead to future studies. So what do you either your group or other people should look at what what would you what do you think yeah i think first of all other studies need to validate our results um in, in different cohorts in in different regions of the world uh, it would be very interesting if this also applies to uh, let's say to the us and um, then i think we should explore some some interventions um aimed at lowering obesity and obesity prevalence in axial spondylar arthritis. And I think this entails implementing preventive public, public health measures as well as individualized approaches. And so far it has not been shown that uh, uh, lowering of, of the BMI has really an effect on the disease activity or on the response to mm -hmm. biologics. So we also would have to show this first so to, to really do like a, a study showing that lowering the BMI has a, an actual effect. We, for sure, and uh, others well, uh, have the experience in clinics that this is the case, but shown with robust data, um, it, it has not been. So this would be another step to do. And um, I think it is also needed to, to look a bit deeper on the, the underlying causes. So on a, on a molecular, probably cellular level of, of what causes this effect of obesity, is it just um, that, that obese patients have a, a higher volume overall and the drugs are underdosed or um, are the, the, the adipose tissue secreting uh, inflammatory um, cytokines, which causes the effect of high disease activity? Um, these days, a lot is going on with sex differences. I think it would would be very nice to see some cellular molecular data on uh, the effect of obesity in um, axial spondylar arthritis. Thank you. That's a lot to be done. So anything you'd like to add that maybe we didn't address? Well, maybe, I mean, I am very much aware of, of the importance of, of patient-centered individual, mm -hmm. individual and personalized medicine. But I think at the same time, we, we should not forget about the, the bigger picture. So the, about the, the public health issues and that um, other um, measures could be taken on a way broader level. And with our data, we showed that obesity ox was probably more of a problem than we previously thought. And this makes me wonder what other lifestyle factors like 
probably smoking mm -hmm. are important in other diseases or disease manifestations, for example, interstitial lung diseases, which need not only a personal personalized approach, but also measures on a public health level. Right. Thank you. And uh, I want to thank Dr. Raphael McCrawley for taking the time to review the findings of his of their paper from his group and the implication. And to our viewers, listeners, I, will you please read, I suggest you read the complete article of Obesity Represents a Persisting Health Issue in Axial Spondylarthritis, Particularly Affecting Socially Disadvantaged Patients. This is currently available on the journal's website at jroom.org and will appear in the December 2023 print edition of the journal. I want to thank both my guest and the audience for joining us and hope next month we'll be again back together when I'll speak to the author of an article of particular interest that I selected from the January 2024 edition of the Journal of Rheumatology and for the listeners, you know, month from now happy new year and to a good year to everybody and i'd love to hear your comments on twitter at jroom or by email at manuscripts at jroom thank you